So student, next provision in capital gain chapter is section 45.5a. Section 45.5a is specifically on a real estate transaction and it is exclusively applicable to individual and HUF. What happens usually in industry, in real estate industry, a builder doesn't have a land. Builder knows how to construct the building. Builder have the capacity to buy raw material for construction. But builder doesn't have a land and he does need neither having a financial capacity to purchase a land. On the other side, there is a land owner who is having a land and he knows that if he sells the land as it is, he may not get the enough money. But if he construct the building and sell it, then he will get a very good price and he will earn very good amount of profit. So a land owner who is a, who is an individual or HUF doesn't know how to construct a building. At the same time, he doesn't have money to invest in the construction. And then there is a builder who is ready to construct this particular building, but he is not ready to pay for a land. So you need to understand problem of a land owner and problem of a builder. One's weakness is another strength. A weakness of a land owner is that he doesn't know how to construct building and he don't want to invest in the building. A weakness of a builder is that he doesn't have a land. The strength of a builder is that he can construct a building with his own capital and the strength of the uh, land owner is that he's having a land but he doesn't, doesn't want to construct it or doesn't know how to construct it. So they can compensate each other by agreeing this particular land owner will hand over the land to the builder for a construction. A builder will construct, say for example, 12 floors here, 12 floors. And out of 12 floors, a builder may agree to give four floors to the land owner, four floors to the land owner that will be sold by the land owner and he will generate a revenue. And eight floors will be sold by the builder to recover his cost plus profit. Okay, so usually in specified agreement or alternatively known as joint ventures agreement, this particular issue has arise. This individual should be liable to pay tax in the year of transfer of a land to the builder or actually transfer of these four floors. So this issue was there in the, for consideration. So we said, no, 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 it should not be taxable in the year in which the land was handed over to the builder. It should be taxable in the year in which the same building is ready from all possible angle and government have given a completion certificate. Because when the property is ready, this particular person may choose to sell it or may not sell it. That is his call. But because the land is transferred to the builder for a non-monetary consideration of four floors, there will be a tax in the year of a transfer. Okay, so please understand stamp duty value of his share that is four floors plus any monetary consideration if given by the builder to the landowner. This will be the full value of consideration. The most important aspect here is it is not taxable in the year of sale. It is year taxable in the year of receipt of CC. Year of receipt of CC means year of receipt of compulsory uh, completion of completion certificate. Liquidation of company is, is totally different discussion that we will have later on. It should be the separate chapter, liquidation of the company and how the taxability arises in the liquidation. Buyback we will discuss now. Buyback is the example of relinquishment, relinquishment of right of a shareholder. Please understand, relinquishment of right to be a shareholder. Ideally, when you are a shareholder, you enjoy the right of ownership in the company. Buyback of securities means, now company is saying, no, I don't want to give you right I am ready to give you money, but don't ask for a right. You are not supposed to ask for the rights. I am not able to give you rights of ownership. So please give back the shares of the company, take the money and get lost. Okay. So they are actually destroying your right. They are extinguishing your right by paying you money. Because you are getting a money, you are also happy about it. So whether the buyback is taxable, answer is yes. Buyback is taxable. So what will be the full value of consideration? Buyback price given by the company. It will be taxable in the year of transfer. Now, so the taxability for listed and unlisted shares and other securities is different. Please understand in buyback, the taxability is converted on a reverse charge basis. So what do you mean by reverse charge? A shareholder who is receiving the buyback price is not liable to tax. 
a company who is paying the money will be liable to pay tax. This is for easy compliances. Okay. So buyback of shares and securities. There will be two types of buyback. Buyback from of shares or securities of a domestic company, listed or unlisted. When the buyback of shares of domestic company is happening, a company is liable to pay buyback tax under section one hundred and fifteen. Under section one hundred and fifteen Q A, at the rate of twenty percent of twenty percent of tax rate, twelve percent of surcharge rate plus four percent of sales. So the effective rate comes to twenty three point two nine six. Company has already paid twenty three plus percentage tax. So buyback is exempted in the hands of shareholder. Please understand, buyback will will be exempted in the hands of shareholder. But if it is not a buyback by the company, it is by a cooperative society or. Foreign company, not a domestic company. Then what will happen? Then the company or the payer is not liable for buyback tax, and because payer is not liable for buyback tax, a shareholder will have to pay tax under Section Forty Six A at a buyback price received by him. So this is how you need to understand the concept of buyback. Very very important concept of buyback. And buyback again we will touch upon when we do the business restructuring. Let us focus on these two sections now. Section Fifty and Fifty A. Section fifty and fifty A is a capital gain on a depreciable asset. One is the WDV method, that is block method. Another one is SLM method. Both of these sections, section fifty and fifty A, we have discussed in depth in PGBP chapter, my dear friends, under section thirty two. Therefore, I am not going to touch upon these chapters, these provisions again here. If you don't remember this, then please go and read the provision of section thirty two. You will see there we have discussed in a capital PGBP chapter. Uh, if I have to show you, we have discussed in section thirty. You go and check. There are total ten points of a depreciation, and point number six talks about sale of capital asset under SLM method and under block method. Okay, SLM method means individual asset method, and block method means the WDV method, a generic method which is there in PGBP chapter. So far as WDV method is concerned, a capital gain will arise only and only when block ceases to exist. If block is into existence, we don't compute the capital gain. This kind of discussion we have had in depth on section fifty and fifty A when we were doing a PGBP chapter. So allow me to jump on slum sale. So what do you mean by slum sale? Slum sale means sale of an undertaking for lump sum price. This is kind of amalgamation. So in slum sale, what happens if a company is having three division and division A, division B, and division C? One of the division they are not willing to run, so all the assets and liabilities of that division they are ready to sell off. Again, I am telling you, I will discuss the slum sale in detail in business restructuring, amalgamation, merger, demerger, slum sale. All this concept we will discuss in slum sale chapter, this business restructuring chapter separately in detail. Now let us come to section fifty C, which is very very important aspect. Again, so whenever land and building is sold in India, every small child also knows that there is a black money involved. Without black money, we don't sell and purchase property. Right now, I am sitting in rural area. Here, the land value which is fixed at five lakh rupees. Please understand the land value they will fix. Agreement value will be five lakh rupees according to the ready reckoner value from the five lakh rupees. Please understand, na? The ready reckoner value is five lakh rupees, but actual transaction will happen at twenty five thirty lakh, and balance twenty five lakh they will take in the cash. This is what is happening in this rural area. So what I am trying to tell you, my dear friends. Whenever there is a transfer of immobile property, we assume government assume that black money is definitely involved, and therefore to control this uh, black money involvement to some extent, they are not a, they are not successful in eliminating it, but they have reduced the transactions uh, in terms of black money, and they are bringing it trying to bring it at the market rate, but obviously it is challenging. they are always taking reference of stamp duty values and stamp duty values are declared by the states and every state is not if you know proactively involved in the process of reviving the stamp duty value on regular basis 
So unless and until state participate in the transaction, we are not able to. We will not be able to do anything. Okay. So fifty C section fifty C, please dear, please friend dear understand. Here, assess is Mr. George. George is the individual. He is trying to sell the property in the ordinary resident. AYPY, you know that he sold the property, which is house property. Date of acquisition was one four two thousand three. For ten lakh rupees, sale price is one crore fifty lakh two percent brokerage. CII for three three four is one zero nine, and current CII is three zero one. That you can compute. If I compute the capital gain for Mr. George, one fifty lakh minus transfer expenses three lakh is equal to one forty seven lakh is the net consideration. And now ten lakh into three zero one divided by one zero nine is the index cost of acquisition. And my taxable capital gain is one crore nineteen lakh. Obviously, when Mr. George is going to see one crore nine, one crore nineteen lakh is going to become taxable. He is not willing to pay the tax. So what he is going to do, my dear friend, he is trying to find the tax evasion practices. One of the tax evasion practices, somebody will suggest him take some amount in cash and some amount in bank. Meaning thereby take some white and take some black. If you take some white and some black. Application of 50C will happen. Application of 50C will happen, and Section 50C says whenever land and building is transferred as a capital asset, actual consideration that you are trying to show us or stamp duty value according to the state government record, whichever is higher will be considered. If you are trying to sell the property at 60 lakh rupees, whereas the stamp duty value is 90 lakh rupees, we will take tax on 90 lakh rupees and not on 60 lakh. This is what a power of Section 50C. It controls the black money involved in the transaction. Yes, assessor can take cash above. See, actual consideration is up to here. Okay, please understand. If this is actual consideration, sixty lakh stamp duty value, ninety lakh, but the fair market value might be one twenty lakh, isn't it? So the gap from fair market value to stamp duty value, gap of fair market value, actual value, and stamp duty value is here thirty lakh. This thirty lakh rupees assessee can take in cash, but if assessee takes cash or black more than more than more than of this particular gap, and if his actual consideration falls below the stamp duty value, then we will ignore the actual consideration and we will focus on stamp duty value. We will take the tax. Okay. So, if actual consideration is less than stamp duty value, stamp duty value is the full value of consideration. If actual consideration is more than stamp duty value, then that more component or actual consideration component will be considered as a full value of consideration. So, what we say always compare actual consideration and stamp duty value and simply take whichever is higher. But usually, people who purchase land and building as a capital asset, they don't sell it. See, my grandfather had purchased the land. He never sold it. My father or my mother had purchased a house property. She did not sell it. So ordinary people will do the dealings in land and building once in their life, or twice in their life, or even not even once. A regularly person who deals in the land and building sale is a builder, a real estate developer, and obviously in real estate also there is lot of black money involved. So what we say, if a land and building is Recorded as a stock in trade in your books of account. That means you are a real estate developer. For you, section forty three C A will apply from the P G B P chapter, and the law is same. Actual consideration or stamp duty value will be considered as a sale price. Only thing is that in fifty C the capital asset which is land land and building, and here the land and building is treated as a stock in trade. That's the only different. Otherwise, both the section talks about the same thing. They are comparing the stamp duty value with actual consideration, and we are taking which is higher. This is specific anti-avoidance rule, or you can say anti-black money section of capital gain chapter and PGBP chapter. Both we are discussing here. So the stamp duty value should be taken on which date? Stamp duty value as on date of agreement, or stamp duty value as on date of registration? So usually, assess you would like to take the stamp duty value as on date of agreement because. If agreement has happened in 2018, the registration may happen in 2021. So usually, as on date of agreement, the value will be low, and on the date of registration, the value may be high. If assessee wanted to take the stamp duty value as on date of agreement, 
then he has to prove that he has received the consideration maybe in full or part amount doesn't matter by account pay check account pay drop ecs and other prescribed mode other prescribed mode includes debit card credit card ecs not not ecs ecs is given separately neft imps or rtgs okay all these are bank transfers debit card credit card neft imps rtgs bank transfers bhim upi or your um, aadhar pay this kind of other prescribed modes which are there you can use any of this modes and you can prove that you had already done the dealing as on date of agreement and then that stamp duty value will be accepted if you have given the consideration in cash or you did not give any consideration then by default stamp duty value as on date of registration which is also known as date of transfer will be considered sir is there any relaxation in this provision because it is little harsh provision no sir yes relaxation is there if a stamp duty value does not exceed 110% till last year it was 105% if some of you have studied this in intermediate level earlier it was 105% now it is 110% so in current year you have to check it with, with, with 110% if a stamp duty value does not exceed 110% of the consideration received then such consideration shall be deemed to be the full value of consideration so what government is saying okay 10% is a buffer given to you so how do i understand this please understand case 1 your actual consideration is 100 lakh but your stamp duty value is 101 lakh obviously 101 lakh is higher than actual consideration but we will not apply section 50c because the gap is not please understand the gap is does gap does not exceed the stamp duty value does not exceed 110% of actual consideration this is your actual consideration you have to take 110% of that 110% is 110 lakh your stamp duty value is only 1 lakh rupees so only for difference of 1 lakh we are not going to activate section provision provision of section 50c so this is one thing that you have to clearly understand case 2 100 100 lakh is actual consideration 103 lakh is my stamp duty value again i will not do whichever is higher here because my stamp duty value does not exceed 110% of actual consideration example 3 actual consideration 100 lakh stamp duty value 108 lakh again i will not apply section 50c or 43c a because my stamp duty value does not exceed 110% of actual consideration but sir if my gap is more than 10% if my gap is more than 110% so stamp duty value 112 lakh okay stamp duty value 112 lakh and actual consideration 10 lakh here we will take whichever is higher and you have to pay tax on 112 lakh because here stamp duty value exceeds 110% of actual consideration so please remember this this is how you have to do it sir what if if somebody is not agree with the stamp duty value given by the state government do they have any option yes they can refer the valuation officer they can request the ao to refer the case to the vo AO may refer the case to valuation officer, and now valuation officer may give three to four different values. Valuation officer may give the value lower than the actual consideration. If it is the lower than the actual consideration, we will ignore that value because minimum sixty lakh rupees or minimum actual consideration value you have to offer to the tax because that much amount is credited to your bank account. Even if the value of the property is less than the actual consideration, you must pay tax on actual consideration. If the valuation officer gives a value more than the stamp stamp duty value given by the state government then also it will be ignored because the basic law does not say the value given by valuation officer or stamp duty value or actual consideration which is higher no 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 higher than the stamp duty value i will not pay the tax so what valuation officer has to make sure that he whatever value he gives he has to give the value between this range and what is the range actual consideration and the stamp duty value here in my example actual consideration is 60 lakh stamp duty value is 90 lakh so if we give 70 lakh 75 lakh 78 lakh 80 lakh 82 lakh we will accept any value given in this particular this particular table 
will be accepted value accepted when value is between actual concentration and stamp duty value lower than actual concentration reject more than actual stamp duty value reject okay so this is the provision for you my dear friend there is no specific question on this 50c but 50c will be used while giving you bigger questions in the capital gain calculation still if you are having any confusion or if you need any clarification please ask